right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Whitney Vosberg, who is just up the or up the uh, up the coast in in Northern California in Lake County. How are you doing, Whitney? I'm well. Thanks to having me. And, uh, and Whitney is the founder and CEO of Brand New Purpose. And as a branding expert, what I wanted to talk today about uh, Whitney is kind of the evolution and changing nature of brand and maybe where brand goes from here in terms of like, what, what does the future hold and how do you create a strong brand? And what are the, and what are brand, the kind of brand attributes? Because I have, a, I mean, re, and, and especially reading some of them, um, some of your material, uh, I have a sense that maybe brand is evolving, but also maybe people's perception of what brand is, maybe that hasn't evolved as much as, as maybe the way people react to brands has, if that's a fair statement. One thing that is, has never changed is that brand and branding is not what you you, the owner of the brand, says it is. It's what others say about your brand that's true. And it is a continuous, ongoing, emotional relationship between the, the, the viewer of the brand, the, the user, the customer, the partner, the whoever, somebody who relates to the brand. And it's, 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 a, it's forever, it's a dynamic, ever-changing emotional relationship of how do I feel about that brand, organization, company, community, what have you. Mm -hmm. So what has changed is that 50 years ago, it was very much sort of a top-down push-out model and then it's evolved into, with the advent of, of social media, uh, micro publishing, the, the ability to make ever more uh, splintered subgroups uh, of market uh, segments, audiences. Uh, it, it evolved into sort of a conversation of, of, of back and forth. And now, many uh, large organizations don't really uh, realize that it's, 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 it's come to like a polar opposite. It's not what they say. It's not the, so much the conversation back and forth, but it's what the stakeholders have to say about the brand right. uh, in conversations one-on-one, -on -one, one on many. Uh, and people's expectations of brands are, are rapidly shifting in terms of it used to be enough that a company would provide or was perceived as providing a good, uh, valuable product or service. Nowadays, uh, for example, taking a political stand. Uh, there are many, not all, but many and, and ever more um, clients, customers, consumers who look to a company, a branded company or branded organization, branded community uh, with expectations that they are going to step up and take a stand in terms of where they stand on a particular uh, issue, whether it's Black Lives Matter or clean water or what have you is there i mean I, I i agree with you but is it isn't there a danger though that um that that it, it tends to be like those sort of things matter to some people and they matter very very um passionately they matter to a certain amount of people is there a danger though that uh, organizations um sort of go down those kind of roads and it actually appeals to us to a smaller segment or a segment of their audience and not the other i mean is there, is there a danger that you can you can get your you can kind of your brand can get pushed in directions that maybe it shouldn't go 
Yes, for sure. That's what makes it so diabolically difficult uh, <laughs> to decide uh, when to take a stand, how to take a stand, uh, on what, um, for how long. Uh, you know, if you follow the 80-20 rule, which is 80% of your profits will come from 20% of your customers, I'd say if you follow that and you have the kind of brand product or service that has a certain amount of resiliency uh, and, and strength and distinction and popularity and demand in the marketplace, you probably are going to be somewhat safe in focusing on what really matters for your core stakeholders. Whether it's, it's the people who, you know, it, people who invest in something important, time, money, energy, uh, interest, affiliation, what have you. you know, and it's, it's not just the, stake, you know, the stockholders, it's the stakeholders. Yeah. So it's your clients, your customers, your employees are very important. For instance, uh, Apple recently uh, fired a new uh, employee because uh, he had written um, misogynist uh, material. Uh, very demeaning to women uh, and uh, enough uh, Apple employees got together and said, hey, this does not, uh, this material does not represent our core values. We demand his removal and Apple did. Yeah, no, and, it, and, I, and I've seen that and it's in, it's interesting and, and it's certainly like it, it differs the type of company. Uh, but I think the danger here again is that, is that, is the motivations to do these things, right? Because if you're just doing it, if you think, okay, well, today we're expected to be more political. So, okay, let's be political. There's no conviction behind it. It's just like, that's expected of us. Therefore, let's just do that because it's some, you know, I think, I think that's where you have to be careful where you do things for the wrong reasons or you do things because you think they're the trend or what to do. You don't do them out of any particular, you know, conviction. Yes, it, it, it it's, uh so important to know what your brand is now you have to know where it came from in terms of its genesis what where it has been over the years in terms of its growth to the present moment what what's your trajectory where are you heading you know in other words what is your north star of purpose and have you been following that? Are you still following that path of purpose, uh, which, if followed properly, is also your path to popularity and prosperity? So you have to think about, does this political, civic, social stand that we're considering in line with our core purpose, as well as our brand. What are yes. our brand values? Yeah, and I think that's really important about the the, the core purpose. Uh, and I think the other thing too is, here's a different example. A lot of practically every company's website you go to today will make some claim about being customer centric or customer, we're, you know, we're customer centric and you know all of that. But your your experiences with a lot of these companies are quite the opposite that they're not when you try to actually enough. engage with them. Yeah. And yeah. so I guess that's um, that's uh, it. To, back to your point is if you're not actually living, living these things as an organization, they just become bumper stickers. And that's what I think sometimes is, you know, people end up investing a lot in in brand, but it's really bumper stickers because the actual organization isn't aligned around it. Well, there, there's a huge difference between brand, living your brand, and brand talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, the greater the discrepancy between what your, uh, your brand is perceived as and what you think the brand is internally, the greater the divide, the greater loss of potential profitability, um, hireability, um, investability, um, uh, kudos, uh, likability, uh, and, and all that. And, and uh, you know, it's so easy now with social media and, and things moving at the speed of mouth and speed of uh, all things digital is that, you know, bad news travels very quickly. Yeah. 
very sticky. So it's so hard and so important to walk your talk and make sure that your talk is based on your core brand purpose, values and, and overall path. Uh, and and obviously, then you have to ensure that your the organization is is aligned around those, and clearly, clearly those are understood. Um, so when you when you work with organizations, like and they say to you, oh, you know, I need Whitney, I need really help with my brand, and I want to, I want to communicate all of these things to the market and all that. How do you actually work with them? How do you flip that to then to say, okay, well, let's actually investigate and look at, you know, how is your brand perceived today? Well, I, I uh, always do uh, many one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews with mm -hmm. uh, people who are hierarchical leaders and who are actual leaders. And actual leaders are people who not, might not have a hierarchical position in the in the organization chart, but they they are the, the go-to people within the organizations. Like, hey, if there's a problem. Uh, or we have a question about this, we'll, we'll go to Bob or Mary because they know their stuff uh, yeah. and they provide informal leadership. So it's finding the people who are normally in charge and the people who are actually in charge and then seeing what you hear and feel and intuit internally, is that mirrored externally? And then if yes, then you work to strengthen that. And if no, then what, where's the dissonance coming from? And how can we use that as an opportunity to start uh, narrowing the gap between what is thought of internally and what is thought of uh, externally. And, and now with social media and work from home, the blur between work and home, uh, work and play uh, between business and, and other is just blurring ever more so. So employees, our customers, our stakeholders, our investors, our, your, your ambassadors um, in, in so many different ways. So you know what has changed also is that the rise of importance of employees. And whether they truly, not nominally, but truly embrace your, your brand values because your staff uh, and your, your partners, your vendors are your brand ambassadors. And it's funny too, because it's interesting that sometimes you see like people, they want to have a they want to have a cool and fun brand, but sometimes that doesn't suit, you know, their business. Sometimes maybe a very simple, reliable brand is it. So how do you help people who maybe want one thing, but really at the end of the day, um, something quite different is more appropriate for them? Yeah, it, it, everybody, not everybody, but many people, um, it, you know, for, for example, uh, America, amongst many other uh, countries and economies, uh, is youth-centric. Mm -hmm. uh, something like 5% of uh, advertising and marketing uh, expenditure is spent on people over 65. People over 65 control 65% of the assets. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, just giving you a, a quick example of yeah. how skewed things are. So, you, you, you know, if, if you are a hip and young company and your clientele or your customers are hip and cool, then yeah. it's, it's great to be hip and cool. But if you're not and they're not, then it's deadly. Because <laughs> not only is it false, but, <laughs> but it's just like, huh? Yeah. But it's funny that we see people falling into that trap nowadays a lot. And yeah. as you said, by social media, because they think, oh, we should do memes. And you go, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, 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 and sometimes, uh, for example, I'll give you an extreme example. Um, it's like the, the, the NRA uh, hypothetically coming out with um, um, a, an anti-gun campaign because they think that that's going to help them bring uh, 
new followers in, in the younger population segment. It's like, it's just, it's off brand. It's inappropriate. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, 100%. Um, so then, uh, but where do you see? Because it seems to me that I mean, because we live in a in in such a, as you said with social media and everything, we live in a very um, in a very visual world. We live in a very reactive world. We live in a world where people have very little attention span for things, and everything is rushing around. So. I mean, going forward, how how do you see brand evolving, particularly when we don't have that level of attention span and, that we, and we tend to get connected in, in kind of strange ways to brands now? I mean, sometimes they just, as you said, there's an emotional connection or there is a reliability connection or there's there's something, but it seems to be rapidly evolving. And it seems that unless you have something very sticky, we're also fickle, right? We can switch brands in a heartbeat. I, yeah, it, so it, it, it means that some of the, the old fashioned uh, basic tenets of branding are more important than ever before, which is know your purpose, you know, your founding purpose. Uh, what are your core values? How do you keep them relevant and fresh and contemporary? So it, it's, 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 you know, life is a, is a whole series of zigzags sure. at best. The most important thing is, is you know, what is the average uh, path and trajectory, trajectory of those zigzags so that, you know, you know, you're going, you came from here, you are here, you're going that way, in that direction. And of course, you know, life is sort of like this. <laughs> what is the mean of that over time? And what does it mean to stay flexible, adaptable, fresh, relevant, but steady and, and consistent in, in terms of, yes, we can uh, chop and change according to short-term tactical needs, but we also are being consistent on a long-term strategic basis. Yeah, no, and it, it, it is really, it is really, really fascinating. And, um, and it's funny, like even uh, because when you've mentioned branding to people, a lot of people just think it's just colors and logos, which clearly it is. Obviously, we know it isn't. Um, but it's funny when you see things happen like that. It just struck me the other day. I noticed we, one weekend we were we were out and, and uh, my wife needed something from a pharmacy. Right. If she just need to pop into a CVS or yeah. whatever. Walking, and was looking around and we couldn't and we couldn't find one. And then realized that actually there was a Rite Aid, but Rite Aid had changed their colors to blue and green. And we were just looking for red, you know, from CVS, red for Walgreens, red for whatever. And that's kind of what drugs, you know, you associate with drugstore. And then we completely missed Rite Aid because they changed their brand. And for us, the connection between like red and pharmacy or whatever was broken. Yeah, and, and that's, the, that's the importance of consistency, and making uh, uh, food packaging companies are brilliant mm -hmm. at making small changes, mini over time, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, so that from day to day, it looks more or less the same. But if you put a row of them, well, let's say one for each year, it's a massive difference between 1990 uh, and 2000 or 2010 and two, two 2020. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, it's, it's knowing how to, make this, those necessary changes in the short term, but maintaining your brand equity, recognizability, um, familiarity, uh, yeah. friendliness, um, you know, like an old friend. It, it, if somebody has a positive experience and, 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 and relationship with something that they're familiar with, um, and you know, and has been red for many years and all of a sudden is blue, it's like, well, that's not a good thing. You might be want to, if you want to, for whatever reason, change it over ten years, fine, but don't do it overnight. Yeah, because you know, it was just, it was just a fascinating um, uh, uh, example that just uh, came across. Because you know, to your point, when they were probably going through this exercise, they probably thought, "Ooh, we're going to change to like blue and green, and we're going to be different, so we're going to stand out from the others." When the fact is, it was the opposite; they got hidden. <laughs> Yes, be careful what you do. You might end up achieving the opposite of what you wish for. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
Um, so uh, when you, when you um, when you look at, as we said when you look at, at brand going forward right as we said there's some traps that you can fall into because you can you can try and go down a path of trying to mimic other brands and maybe that doesn't work for your particular um, organization or let's face it people get executives and especially your chief financial officer if you say oh I really want to look at our brand you know they immediately break out in a cold sweat because they're thinking oh my god that's going to be millions of investment if we have to alter our brand but you can as you said you can uh, you can iterate or evolve your brand without going the whole hog of completely changing everything right yeah it, it, the the most important things are um the cheapest things to do and the hardest to do for instance providing better leadership uh, walking your talk in terms of having uh, leaders throughout the organization do what they say they do, model uh, the appropriate behavior, and be the best examples that they can be. Mm -hmm. And, and here, here's something that is changing rapidly with social media, working from home, greater uh, flexibility in terms of life and work um, is that people now, because we're going to have ever more shorter work projects, jobs, careers, whatever you want to call it, is that we need to be our own brands, our own leaders. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point there. And I also wanted to underline what you just said a moment ago about the brand is brought alive by people modeling the behavior. And I think this is this is and I think this is something that's kind of lost societally, if you like, right now is people think that it's OK if I tell you if I tell you what a great person I am and what I believe in, that should be enough for you, whereas um, Whereas at the end of the day, we look at people on how they behave, how they live, how they model things. So if I say one thing, but I act in a different way, right, you know, that immediately is perceptible. It's the same with the brand. You can put all of the, you can say all of these things on your advertising and your website and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, like we really care. But if I call you up for a customer service thing or, or I get in touch with one of the executives and they just fob me off to somebody immediately, and there's a total like dissonance or disconnect between what they say and how they act. And I think that's the piece that a lot of people are missing. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's brand is, is, you have no control of your brand internally because it's, it's, the, it's in the, the heads and hearts of the people outside the organization. Right. What, what organizations do is branding. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's the total sum of what you do and what you don't do, how and when, and what order, um, and how well you do those uh, uh, in terms of what people have been led to expect. expect. But it, it, the, 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 at the end of the day, it's the simplest things that can make and break and do brands. Uh, mm -hmm. I continually um, are flabbergasted at how bad, incompetent, uh, so on. Um, customer service is uh, on the phone for major U.S. corporations. It's mm -hmm. astounding. And oh, yeah. employees are only as good as they are treated. Mm -hmm. And customer service is only good as employees are treated. So if you have tr employees are treated well, they're much more likely to treat their, you know, their customers, uh, the people on the front line, uh, and it's just, it's, it's an amazing, and, and the, the short term, the rush, uh, the, 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 the mad race to the bottom uh, by uh, major corporations, um, airlines are a great example. They will do anything uh, to make a, a quick buck uh, at the cost of their, um, <laughs> their brand equity. Yeah. <laughs> it's astounding. No, it is, it is, it is, because um, I was using the example, I won't name the airline, just to be fair, but um, 
I always said like there was a particular airline that I used to fly in all the time because it just happened that I lived near the hubs and all of that. Yeah. You know, the way you, you default into your right. airline. And I used to say eventually, I used to, I used to say to people that when I'm flying with them, I set my expectations on the floor. And mostly they meet those expectations and just once in a while do they kind of rise above it. Um, and to your point, I mean, because my expectations were, it's going to be, if I can, if I get there semi on time, I'm good because the rest of the experience is not going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that means that there's tremendous opportunity for um, old brands to renew themselves or for new brands to establish themselves as, uh, as leaders in the, in their fields. I mean, it, it the, 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 you know, it, it's, it's, things have gotten so bad with so many large companies across the board, uh, B2B, B2C, that for the most part, it's only one direction and it's this way. No, absolutely. Listen, then, this is fantastic. Thanks so much, Whitney. All of well, Whitney's information is going to be below this video uh, so you can find out more. But before we go, please tell us, Whitney, a little bit more about you and what your company does. Well, Brand New Purpose uh, is about aligning heads, hearts, and hands. So uh, individual leaders, individual contributors, organizations, communities, companies, it's the alignment of, you know, your, your why, your who and where, and your how. So it's why, you know, what is your uh, brand uh, promise? Mm -hmm. Who are you there to serve? Where do you find them and how do you best serve them? Yeah, fantastic. Um, listen, great advice there. I encourage everybody to check out uh, Whitney and his company's work. I encourage you to, to take a look at your brand and see, are you living your brand? Are you modeling the behaviors or are you just another company with a bunch of bumper stickers on your, on your website? Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.